Hey, this is Luke Simons with Salt Strong. Just wanted to make this video to show what to do when you get stuck by, by a fish in some underwater structure. In this case, it was mangroves, but the same premise holds true under docks, rocks, really any sort of underwater structure. This has saved me a lot of fish over the years. And the answer is actually the opposite of what your reflex kind of forces you to do. So be sure to check this out and please do let me know at the end, you know, if you do have any other strategies for getting yourself out of situations like this. Anyhow, hope you enjoy. Strike is coming soon. Oh, oh there we are. Oh no, don't, don't break me off. That's right, got me way back in there. So I'm, I'm just gonna lighten up on the pressure because if I, if I give it a ton of pressure, it's just gonna break the line. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm just gonna have to just hope that it starts starts kind of pulling himself out. That's the bad thing about fishing tight to cover. Uh, I had to get up close to get the bite and uh, I couldn't get out fast enough to get him out of there. So I'm just feeling for it. I, I just want to feel him move. And then as soon as he does, I want to move a little bit and then I just want to gain like two inches at a time. This could take a while. It might just have me so buried back there. I might be, I might be toast. He's in there real good. I don't think I have a shot at this guy now. A lot of times they'll start kind of moving themselves out. Oh, there he is, there he is. Now, that was, that's what I wanted to feel. All right, I just, I just gained on him. Oh, nice. Stop it, Otis, stop it. So I'm being real gentle. It's in the weeds again. It's in the weeds, I'm being real gentle. Otis, hey, stop it, stop it. Oh, we gained on him. We're in better shape now than we were before. Dang, he was out for a second too. <laughs> this might even be a grouper. It's holding real tight to structure. Yeah, with just 10 pound line, this is a pretty good sized fish. Um, I just have to be real careful. Oop, nice, nice, it's out. It's out, nice. Sweet. It is a grouper, oh but darn. Golly, this thing had me way in there. So I have the, it's off the structure, I'm gonna light my drag. It's not a huge one, but <laughs> these things are just so stinking powerful. It's, it's really big for an inshore grouper. Got a box Otis out. A new species for the old slam shady color. Never know what you're gonna never, never what you're gonna hook when you put a paddle tail next to the mangroves like that. After every fish, you always feel the line, especially when they get you buried up in the structure. I mean this entire leader I can feel is frayed, so I'm gonna replace that all. Yeah, and in uh, case you're wondering what line I'm using, just regular mono. Um, just Andy mono. This is no none of that fluorocarbon stuff. Uh, what I found is after testing is that uh, is that mono has much better abrasion resistance. So situations like that, I mean, that was just 20 pound mono and it didn't break. Uh, even though that wasn't a huge grouper, they, you know, those, those grouper are shockingly strong and they're, uh, they're incredibly good about getting buried in structure. And so 20 pound, just regular cheap mono uh, got the job done. So I don't, I don't use fluorocarbon anymore. I've been doing, I've been testing back and forth, especially in, in areas with murky water like this. Um, I just don't think it's just fluorocarbon is needed and uh, in situations like that it actually uh, I believe it actually would be a little bit harmful. 